Hey, this is Phil Ebener, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these custom zoom blur and zoom rotation transitions right in Premiere Pro. So let me take these clips that I have here. I'm going to copy them later on my timeline, and you can follow along just by putting together two clips and transitioning from one to the next. The first one we're going to do is the zoom blur, this one right here. And so this one is going to take an adjustment layer. Now I've already created an adjustment layer and the benefit of doing this is it already has that marker on there that I can just match up in on that cut. Otherwise you can just add the adjustment layer which you create here with this new item button, adjustment layer, hit okay, add it to your timeline, go to that cut, and press M on your keyboard to create a marker while you have the adjustment layer selected. And that way you can easily get to the very middle of the clip or where the cut is on your timeline. So to create the zoom effect, we're going to use the transform effect. So under distort, there's a transform option. And with the transform, you can see that it has a lot of the properties that you have up here in your motion properties, but this is just a secondary way to adjust it. And I find that it works better, especially when you're trying to copy and paste from one adjustment layer to the next or from one clip to the next. Uh, I just use the transform properties. So what we're going to do to create a zoom is basically zoom in or scale up into this clip and then scale back down to the next clip. So if we go on our timeline to the cut and we go back to our adjustment layer, we're going to set a keyframe for our scale and we're, it's going to be uniform scale. So I'm going to click that uniform button and here actually we can go ahead and set a, a scale property at 100 here and then just move that back a few frames and then we're going to zoom up to let's say 200. And then we're gonna go forward and, and I'm just gonna hit the shift key, jump five frames by hitting shift and then the right arrow key and go back down to 100. So let me put this in and out points on this transition so we can watch it. I also have my loop playback button selected. If you don't have that, just click the plus button under your program monitor, click the loop playback, drag it onto this button panel down here check that on and now I can set the in and out points on my timeline so I can easily play back what I'm working on and it will just repeat. So this is the basic uh, basics of what we're doing but we wanna make this look better. First, we wanna ramp up the speed of this zoom so it looks better and to do that we can select all of these keyframes by clicking and dragging over them, right click one of them and choose Bezier. And now what this does is it ramps up the effect and then ramps it down. To adjust this manually, we can click this drop down button over to the left of scale and we can actually zoom in and we see a graphical representation of the velocity and the amount of scale. So if we take one of these handles and we click and drag to the right, you can see that it's actually going to start to ramp a little bit slower. What we're doing is we're adjusting the speed so it ramps up a little bit slower and then it hits its peak. And when it hits its peak, it animates a little bit faster. And so this has a little bit more spring in its step as we might say, and I think it looks a little bit better. We might wanna come in here and the last one ramp down or maybe even just move the keyframe a little bit more. It might be a good idea to exactly match the motion or the length of time for the between the keyframes, but I think this looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to do to really sell this effect is add some motion blur or some blur as we're moving in and out. So still under the transform effect, if we uncheck the use composition shutter angle and then we increase the shutter angle, you can see as we're moving up, well, if we go between these keyframes, it actually creates some blur, okay? And so that actually makes it look a little bit better.
What you could also do is add another blur effect on top of this adjustment layer and keyframe it. So you could add directional blur. So let's just add some directional blur here. And I'm going to go to this middle keyframe. If I'm working up here in my effect controls tab, I can just click these arrows right here to jump from one keyframe to the next. And then if I scroll down, I see the next effect that I've applied. And I'm actually going to go ahead and set a keyframe direction. I'm gonna do 90 so that it's horizontal. And then blur length. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do a little bit Let's do like 30 or so. And then set a keyframe for both of these. And then go back to my previous keyframe right here for scale. And then go back and set our blur length to zero. Go to our last keyframe, set blur length to zero. Select all of these and we're just going to bezier them. And so that adds quite a bit of blur there. We could even ramp it up even more, which is kind of cool. Make this even more interesting. We could start at zero and then it, the actual blur of the effect rotates while it's happening. And probably a good idea to bezier these two to match So that's one way to add style to this. Another one is to add a lens distortion. Lens distortion. So this is not under presets, but we're not removing lens distortion, but under distort, we're actually adding lens distortion. So this time I'm gonna start at my first keyframe up here in the transform. For curvature, I'm gonna set a keyframe here and then I'm going to go to my last keyframe and set another keyframe for zero. And then in the middle, if I go to this middle keyframe, I'm going to set my curvature to something like negative. You can go all the way up to negative 100 to make this as strong as possible. And it creates this sort of lens curving effect on the outside. And I'm going to bezier this. And that creates another sort of additional style element to it that I think looks pretty good. Okay, so that's how you create the zoom in sort of effect, zoom blur. Now let's do this zoom rotation, which is very similar in terms of what we're actually going to be doing. It's also using the transform property. I'm going to start with the adjustment layer again. And the cool thing about this is now if we create it for this one effect or one transition, we can copy the adjustment layer and it's going to apply to any other clips. So it's a super quick way to create transitions and copy them to another one. So again, we're going to take our transform property under distort. I'm not sure why there's two here. That is looks like a glitch in the Premiere Pro matrix. And what we're going to do is rotate. So here, starting from the middle, I'm going to hit the shift button and go back five frames. Under transform, we're going to adjust the rotation and set the rotation to zero. And then we're going to go shift right, shift right, and that's five frames after the middle of this. I'm not setting a keyframe for the midpoint for this effect. And we're going to rotate. Now you could rotate left or right. I think rotating left for this one works pretty good because of the angle of sort of the horizon of this shot and the hikers hiking up. So I feel like it makes sense to rotate this way. Now to completely rotate, it would be 360 degrees. Or if you just type in negative one X, it will rotate one times. So one times is the same as 360 degrees. Now the problem with this is that the edges of this effect are obviously not good. You see the black edges. So we're gonna have to do something to stretch this clip and add sort of a zoom option to it so that we see the edges. 
But first, let's add a little bit of a bezier. So this ramps up and down a little bit more. And I'm actually gonna go in here, drop down this, and create even more of a, a speed ramp. I think this is a little bit fast, so I'm gonna actually take this first keyframe and drag to the left. For the second one, drag to the right. I really like sort of ramping up to an extreme here. And then same thing, I'm going to change the composition shutter angle and use a new shutter angle of 360. So while this is rotating, we get some of that blur. 360 might be a little intense for this effect. So the quickest way to stretch this or to add some sort of effect so that we don't see the black edges is within the transform properties, we have the scale height and width. So here we're going to set a keyframe at the very beginning. So this is at the first keyframe. Let's actually delete those, it was slightly off. So I just use this button to get exactly to that keyframe. Set it for 100 and then go to the next one and set it for 100 again. Now I'm gonna go to the middle, right here in the middle where we're in the middle of our transition and I'm going to scale up and I'm gonna scale beyond the edge because I know I'm going to have to go a little bit extra because as it rotates, you can see that even from the very beginning, it's going to need to sort of scale up a little bit faster. So we can go as far as we need basically until the edges are are on the complete or covering the complete screen basically. So I'm gonna actually go in and bezier these and then I'm gonna move the keyframes for the scale animation just a little bit outside that of the rotation because I need it to start zooming in before it rotates because it's the edges of this clip as it starts to rotate yeah, I think that's gonna work. The edges really start to be seen quickly. So that's pretty cool. This is a pretty cool effect. Now we could do the same thing. We can copy, how about we just copy this lens distortion to this effect to add a little bit more to it and just make sure that the keyframes match up where you want them to, and it does. And there you have a pretty solid rotation transition all built right into Premiere Pro with one adjustment layer. So say we have another clip now, we just have, let's say this driving clip, we can just copy this adjustment layer by option clicking it and dragging it over, making sure that that marker point is in the middle of the transition where these this cut is and that's why that marker is so important and to be able to adjust the keyframes around that midpoint or that marker on the adjustment layer so that when you do copy it you know exactly where you need to place it so now we can have this sequence with these two rotation blurs there's a little bit of an edge being seen right, actually it's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. All right, I know this was a long tutorial, but I wanted to go in depth in creating more advanced transitions in Premiere Pro, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching.